Hello, I hope you're well. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today's video is in honor of Women's History Month, which is happening right this second as I film in March, and I thought I'd put together a list of book recommendations on some really trailblazing women, historical badasses that deserve love and attention. If you are new to my channel, then you might not know that I already have an affinity towards nonfiction, history, and biographies on women, and that's in part because over the years I've come to understand that the lives and legacies of countless women have not received the recognition they deserve, or they have otherwise been kind of put in the footnotes of history. So for me, it might be a small thing to do, but I seek out those stories and like to share them with you as well. So why don't we dive into it? I have a selection of books on some amazing women that I really enjoyed and hope you will too. Okay, the first book that I want to talk about is The Tigress of Forlì, Renaissance Italy's most courageous and notorious countess, Caterina Riario Sforza de' Medici by Elizabeth Lev. Now I have had this book for years, which the yellowing pages can attest to, and it is also underlined within an inch of its life. But I fell in love with the story of Caterina Sforza after reading this book, to the point that I actually started outlining and researching for a novel that I planned to write in my I'm going to be a best-selling author phase. But Katarina Sforza is just, is truly one of those individuals who has been kind of put in the footnotes of history. She has appeared as sort of a supporting character in TV shows about the Borgias. She has appeared in video games like Assassin's Creed, but as far as having her own kind of moment in the spotlight, there are very few of them that I know of at least. And she had the self-awareness that in her life towards the end she reportedly told a monk that if she wrote down everything that had happened it would shock the world. And that is truly the case with this individual. So she was the daughter of the Duke of Milan, she was a niece by marriage to Pope Sextus, and during her time she was very politically savvy and astute. One of the most impressive things that I think she did was after Pope Sextus, her uncle by marriage, dies, she gallops into Castel Sant'Angelo, the fortress protecting the Vatican, when she's seven months pregnant, takes control of it, which means she has taken control of the Vatican and basically brings the Vatican to its knees and causes the conclave of cardinals to freak out. She also takes on Cesare Borgia, and although she doesn't win that battle, it is phenomenal to see this woman taking on a Borgia of all people. So she's really interesting. In addition to that, she is really the embodiment of a true Renaissance woman. So she is rumored to be the model for the Mona Lisa of all things, and even if that happens to be a, an urban legend, she is actually in a fresco that Botticelli did in the Sistine Chapel. So she was renowned for her beauty in the time. Niccolo Machiavelli did not like her and had some really nasty things to say about her in his own books, but she's just phenomenal. I personally really enjoyed this biography on her. I think it was well done. It didn't have that male gazy kind of look at her history. And it really did pack a punch as far as giving you the context around everything that she was doing. So if you like the Italian Renaissance, I would highly, highly recommend this one. The next book is one that has appeared on my channel countless times at this point because it was one of my favorite reads of 2020. And that is A Woman of No Importance, The Untold Story of the American Spy Who Helped Win World War II by Sonia Purnell. Now yes, this is a biography, but it did not le read like one. It was a page turner that I devoured. My adrenaline was pumping the entire time. If you are someone who is into espionage or even World War II, I would highly, highly recommend it. Before reading this book, I knew nothing about Virginia Hall, and she became one of these figures that I am outraged that more people don't know about currently. So she is an American 
woman who ended up working for the British during World War II and infiltrated then occupied France and created this vast network of intelligence that basically imperiled her life. At one point the Nazis know her know who she is and are basically hunting her down. She narrowly escapes France and then decides to go back and then is one of the figures that helps us to liberate parts of France after D-Day. So she's just this phenomenal woman. She dealt with so much adversity. Firstly, she was a woman in a man's field, so she was dealing with sexism, but she was also an amputee, which means that she was dealing with ableism too, and she let neither of those things stop her and just kept powering through it and it was just incredible and there's so many interesting snippets about her life the fact that she was basically a master or i guess mistress of disguise who had hollywood makeup artists show her how to pencil in wrinkles properly so that she looked older and also had her teeth ground down i mean it was just really really fascinating and i loved it and it's certainly a book that I want to return to and reread at some point, but yes, highly, highly recommend this one. Especially if you're someone who doesn't normally read nonfiction history or biographies, I think this would be a good choice as a starting point. The next book is The Wives by Alexandra Popoff, and unlike the other two books that I've just spoken about, this is not a biography on a single woman, but rather vignettes on six women, the wives of Russian great literary figures. So you have Anna Dostoevsky, Sofia Tolstoy, Elaine Anna Buldakov, Vera Novakov, Nedezda Mendelstrom, and also Natalia Stoliknitsyn, whose last name I never ever 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 get right because although I studied Russian history, I did not study the Russian language, so my pronunciation is always a bit off. But that's another video entirely. So this book is looking at these six women and the contributions they made to the careers and craft that produced these phenomenal Russian works that so many of us know even if we haven't read them. So it has been a minute since I read this book, but this is where my love affair with Sofia Tolstoy stems from. I read this and was a goner. I was in her thrall and have been for a number of years. So I have a lot of fond memories of this book, but reading it made me kind of come to the conclusion that these great Russian works of literature would never have seen the light of day if not for what these women contributed. They were not only muses to their husbands, but they participated in the actual production of these works. They were typists and researchers, stenographers, publishers, critics, agents, and it was just really fascinating to read about and explore in that way. I would say that if you're looking for full fledged biographies on these women, this is not that book. This is really focused and targeted on their contributions to Russian literature and the careers of their husbands. And they were all very intelligent women in their own right. And I think that book, that this book did a really nice job of making that very apparent. So I would say it is more of a teaser or a primer if you are interested in literary history or Russian literature or Russian history. I would say that this is a nice little introduction um, and I would say that if you are particularly drawn to any of these women after reading it then I would seek out other biographies or other sort of sources for further information. But for what it is, which is these small sort of targeted biographies on these women. It is really well done in my opinion. I found it really approachable and it was just really up my alley when I read it. The next book is Clementine, The Life of Mrs. Winston Churchill by Sonia Purnell. So this was actually the first Sonia Purnell biography that I read and I liked her style of writing and also the way that she told 
the story of Clementine Churchill's life enough to seek out another of her biographies. But I had always been interested in Clementine Churchill as a figure separate from her husband because she really does live in Winston Churchill's shadow. But I think what kind of piqued my interest in recent years is that she has been portrayed by a number of well-known British actresses in TV shows like The Crown or in movies like The Darkest Hour and I feel like the portrayals are all sort of similar in that she is this very intelligent woman that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Winston Churchill and not bat an eyelash and so she seemed really strong and impactful in that way and I wanted to see if it was based on anything from history itself and I was honestly completely floored to learn all that Clementine Churchill accomplished separate of her husband. So first of all, yes, she was heavily involved in Winston Churchill's political career and political life. She campaigned for him. She helped him with his speeches. She unruffled feathers that he had ruffled. He went to her for advice and support. She was briefed on Operation Overlord aka D-Day from the beginning and sat in on a lot of government meetings and was involved in a lot of the policy making when probably as a civilian honestly she shouldn't have been but that was the level of trust that Winston Churchill had in his wife which is saying a lot about her character I think but Separately, this is a woman who is far more liberal than Winston Churchill to a point that her political views and Winston Churchill's views caused quite a few arguments, especially later on in his career when I feel like he was becoming increasingly more conservative. But she also accomplished a lot in her own life. She was the individual who spearheaded the efforts to improve the conditions within the air raid shelters during World War II because she thought the circumstances were squalid and uninhabitable. That was her. She was a fundraising machine to the point that Stalin actually gave her a medal for all the fundraising she did on behalf of the Russians during World War II when they were allies. And she was a fire watcher which was a really dangerous job during the Blitz, but she encouraged women to become involved in the war effort at home while the men were going abroad. And so she had this very feminist feel about her that I really appreciated. Um, and this is also a woman who dealt with a lot of loss in her lifetime and also some mental health issues that I found really powerful to read about. She was by no means a perfect woman. By all accounts she was actually a horrible mother which this book does not mince words about but she was just so fascinating to me and I read this book and developed a lot of respect for Clementine Churchill and all that she was able to accomplish. If you are someone who is interested in sort of history in the first half of the 20th century, World War I and World War II in particular, I would certainly recommend this book. If you like British history, again, I would also recommend it. But I really just enjoyed this so much when I read it and highly, highly recommend it. And lastly, we have The Three Escapes of Hannah Arendt by Ken Krimstein, which is a graphic novel style biography on Hannah Arendt. Now, I am not a graphic novel person in general. In fact, this is the first and only graphic novel to date that I can say that I truly enjoyed. But I really did enjoy this one for what it was. And Hannah Arendt is one of the greatest philosophical minds of the 20th century, I would argue. But accessible she is not. Her writing is the, is the furthest thing from accessible, says the girl still struggling through origins of totalitarianism. But I think this did a really good job at introducing you to the life of Hannah Arendt and really did a phenomenal job at creating a sense of time and place and the circumstances 
under which Hannah Arendt came to the conclusion she did and sort of the struggles that she would have faced within her life both external from the Nazis whom she escaped and also internal when it comes to the fact that she had been in love with someone who would later become a Nazi sympathizer and her kind of grappling with those feelings. And I just really, really enjoyed this. As I said, it, it really did provide a strong sense of time and place as far as the individuals that Hannah Arendt would have come into contact with and had relationships with and whose theories and artistic contributions would have also had an impact on her life. This is not a full-fledged biography on Hannah Arendt by any means, but I do think, again, this is a nice taster, an appetizer, an hors d'oeuvre, <laughs> as it were, um, that if you were interested in her, in her even minutely, you could start here and then see if you wanted to find other more traditional forms of biography to read about her from. I really enjoyed this when I read it in... January, I think. Wow, that feels like a long time ago already. Um, but I would certainly recommend it if you're even remotely interested in Hannah Arendt or um, sort of political or philosophical theory. Um, if you're interested kind of in the late 19th and first half of the 20th century, I also think this is really interesting. And because of the format in which it is written as this graphic novel style biography. If you're someone who wants to kind of dip their toes into the nonfiction or biography genres, then I would certainly recommend this because again, it makes it a little bit more approachable and unique in that way. So again, I would highly, highly recommend it. So those are five books that I would recommend you read in honor of Women's History Month or honestly at any time during the year. I really enjoyed my experience reading those books and everything that I learned about these women, their lives, and their legacies, and finished those books having developed such a deep-rooted or deep-seated respect for them. So I would highly recommend any of these if they pique your interest. But as always guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you did enjoy it and if you did be sure to give it a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Bye!